Hi, welcome to tdcat.com. Today we're comparing an audio file taken from Tidal and an audio file taken from the lossy Spotify. I've recently done a post on the website about music streaming services. So what I wanted to do is look at two tracks or two recordings from both Spotify and Tidal and ju just do a fairly unscientific comparison of those two because Tidal sells itself primarily on the fact that it's a lossless a lossless service. So, you know, unlike Spotify, which um, on, the, on the premium service streams at least all its current content at 320 kilobits per second, though there is some older content on there that's still at 160, Tidal streams apparently everything at uh, in the FLAC, FLAC format, which so essentially comes to you in a completely lossless, nothing thrown away format. So that's supposed to be a good thing. But what I want to find out here is just take a look at the files and sort of think, does it actually make that much difference? So we're going to start off here with uh, the two tracks that I've got. So I've got an MP3 version of them. And the MP3 version I've got is just something I've encoded at one to, to, one to eight kilobits per second. So this is kind of a bad example MP3, just to give you a sort of feel for how that looks. And um, I picked two tracks. One is, uh, they're both sort of uh, chart tracks or charty type music, pop music or similar because uh, I'm not going down the classical route because it's not what I listen to and it's not my kind of thing. Uh, so I'm not, you know, that wasn't what I chose to use in this case. So we've got um, a song here that's really quite compressed. It's hyper compressed. And you can see that from the from the waveform, even though I haven't got too much space to show the waveform on here, you can still see the amount of energy in this waveform and how compressed it is. And it's sort of, you know, it's really, really dense. Compare that to the um, the, the Ola 4 Arnold's track, which has got its kind of dynamics kept intact, and it's got sort of quieter parts. And, and what we've got here, just to explain, is we've got the track recorded once from Tidal, in, uh, so from Spotify in this case, and second there is Tidal. Oddly, I did it the other way around on the other track, but that was just a mistake on my part, so just wanted to confuse confuse you. So the first thing you'll see here, apart from the how, how much energy and how much dynamic range has been squeezed out of the music in that other one, on this 1 to 8 kilobit MP3, we've got a sort of um, low-pass filter in place, really, and that's pretty normal at a 1 to 8 kilobit MP3, because there have to be bits saved somewhere, and usually what you find is that there's a filter put in place so that the high frequencies are simply cut off. It's just assumed, right, we're going to throw all of that away because we can use those bits more sensibly elsewhere to produce a better sound in the rest of the file. And you can see that very clearly here because you've got the spectrum analysis down the bottom here, which kind of cuts off about 15, 16 K. So we've got nothing, all this black area here is where we have no, um, there's no, um, volume or there's no amplitude uh, in the waveform at all above those frequencies. And the same on the other one. If we go to this, you can see it a lot more clearly because it's a lot more, um, there's a, a lot more compression going on there. So there's a lot more sort of energy in the waveform using that term. It's not really quite correct, but, um, but hopefully you get what I mean. And you can see a very definite cutoff point here. And in the frequency analysis here, where we've got frequency going from left to right on the X axis and on the Y axis, We've got um, decibels, though it is only, it's sort of linear, it's a linear line here, so it's not your standard logarithmic curve that you might use in these situations. Uh, and here we, again, we can see a very clear drop off at the sort of, just sort of 16K mark, very definite drop off all of a sudden. If I just play that file, really crazy. you can see really is nothing of any consequence uh, in this area of the waveform. And if we just play the other one, you'll probably find that's a lot less. Same idea. In fact, this one's not zoomed in as much, so I'm just going to zoom in on that to create a similar kind of look. So same idea, we've got that huge drop here. But let's have a look now at the, uh, the Tidal Spotify sort of whole argument. So here we have our Spotify track. So this would have been streamed at 320 kilobits per second. It has been recorded to a 24-bit WAV file. So uh, it's kind of, you know, it, it's, uh, it's, it is in a good 
good format now, but of course it's still lost what it's lost. You can't get back what you've what you've already chucked away. So we see we 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 now don't have that drop there, and we've got these two. Essentially, this here, this, the um, spectrum analysis here, looks really similar to this here. And equally, if we jump across on the file, they're, they're virtually identical. In fact, I'm going to zoom into one point on here. I haven't really got too much space to work with here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this bit at the start because it's very easy to distinguish this bit. And you can see how much, you know, how, how much um, it goes right up to sort of, uh, you know, You'd expect this to go somewhere to the re in the region of uh, 22k, but in, we'll have a look at that in a second. And if we scroll over to the other one and take a look at the same clip, if it decides to update it for me, is it going to update my uh, spectrum analysis? Yeah, there we go. Wow, that took its time. I don't know what settings I've got it on. But really, these two are absolutely identical. They, in the spectrum analysis, at least, they look absolutely identical. And then it's only when you come to the frequency analysis here that you see that the WAV file, or the lossless file that comes from Tidal, keeps everything right up to 22K. So we get a tiny drop off at the end here, but it, all the data is there right to the top. If we take a look at Spotify, what you'll notice is that the 320 kilobit version has a, a still has this kind of low pass filter. It's not as aggressive as the 128 kilobit MP3, but it's still there and we're losing information at any point above sort of 18, 19K. But then you just get to the point of arguing, well, who cares? Does it really matter? You know, your, your ears cannot hear anything at that frequency. So does it actually matter? I'm not even going to get into that here. I just wanted to look at two waveforms between the two and uh, compare them. So I'm going to do the same on this more dense track here. And here we have the Tidal one first and the Spotify one second. So that is the Tidal one. And that is the Spotify one. So here again, you see we've got this drop off occurring. A lot more noticeable a bit further on in the track there. We've got this drop off here at 18k. And if we go to the tidal version, we've got all this information that remains in the track. Ignore the fact that it says sort of minus 90 dB. It's just sort of relative to, 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 the, to the, you know, this, this frequency analysis shows us that uh, the majority of the, uh, the the energy in the track is in these lower frequencies and there's less so in these higher frequencies. It's not, you know, it wouldn't actually be at 90 dB because you wouldn't hear a thing at 90 dB really on any, any sort of main system. But really, that's it. I mean, it's taken me nine minutes to tell you that, but really what we're going to what we're getting down to here is the fact that the only difference between Spotify 320 kilobits per second and Tidal lossless streaming, despite the fact their marketing sells it so aggressively on, wow, this is the most amazing sound quality ever and it's just going to blow you away. And um, this is what you lose. So you just lose that very top, that very top bit here. So this section here. So, Audio purists out there could come back and say, that's really important because there might be instruments, you know, if you're listening to some more classical music, there might be instruments that have a harmonica at that frequency or, or have, a, have something that's produced at that frequency that, and the harmonics that come off that re are reliant on that frequency being there to produce a true sound of that instrument or something like that. I don't know. I'm not a sound engineer. So, you know, I, I haven't sort of studied this in any great detail, but that's kind of how I can imagine arguments coming forward as to why you would use this. Um, but, you know, really, if you're not, if you, if you, if you can get away with not throwing something away, perfect, do it, keep it, keep it lossless. If you've got the bandwidth, but the, but the problem is with Tidal, they charge you twice the amount of money just for lossless. The service overall is less mature. It's less, um, it's less sort of um, less tweaked and honed and reliable. And there's sort of just not, well, it just doesn't 
work quite as well as Spotify and there's not the sort of community out there as there is with Spotify. But it is lossless. But they're going to charge you, so in the UK, nineteen ninety nine for lossless and nine ninety nine for 320 kilobits, which is exactly the same as a premium service on Spotify. And all you're getting is this, this little bit between the two. Other than that, these look absolutely identical. Yes, if it was MP3 down at 1 to 8 kilobits, where you've got this huge loss here, big frequency cut off at 16, 15, 16K. But in this case, you haven't. Just don't think it's worth it. I'm really interested to know what you think. And if you find this sort of stuff interesting, waffling on about audio files and audition and all that sort of stuff, then please uh, do consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you next time. <laughs>